What's going on, guys? It's Investing Hustler here, and today I'm going to talk about Aurora Cannabis. I'm going to talk about 20 things you need to know about the Aurora Cannabis earnings, a new facility they're opening up, and many, many more. So you guys might be wondering, why do I have two logos here of my Investing Hustler logo? I just want to ask you guys your opinion. Which logo do you think is better? Here's my old logo, and here is one that uh, me and this and uh, one of my subscribers have been working on. I added this little diamond in the middle. Some people don't like it. Some people like it. I want to know what you guys think. Which logo is better, left or right? Just comment left or right, something like that, left or right. Or if you want, also tell me which one you'd like it better and why. And that's it. So we're going to get this video started. First, we're going to take a look at Aurora Cannabis. So right now, we had a horrible pre-market yesterday. We had a, I mean, we had a horrible pre-market today. We had a horrible post-market yesterday, but it seemed like things picked up almost immediately once the markets open. So right now, currently, Aurora is up 2.74% in and Canopy Growth is up 3.03%. Let's just look at all these companies. So CGC is up 3.4%. Aurora is up 2.79%. Afria is up 7.76%. Tilray is up 2.03%. Hexo is up 3.9%. And Cron is up 3.6%. So all these big companies, they're in the green right now. It's looking good. It's not looking like the, <clears throat> the earnings affected Aurora that bad because I personally think they weren't that horrible. There was one thing that was really bad with the earnings, but I think gross revenue, net revenue, and marijuana sales, they were record-breaking. They, they, um, they beat gross revenue quarter over quarter by 109%, but we're going to get into that real quick. And also, let's talk about why the stock market is doing really well today. And this is a very quick, simple article. Stock jumps as tentative deal is reached to avoid government shutdown. That's all it is. S&P 500 is up 32 points. Dow 30 is up 327 points. NASDAQ is up 93 points. Russell 2000 is up. Crude oil is up. Gold is up. We seem to be having a green day all around. Silver is in the red. Let's look at um, US dollars up. Bitcoin's down. But yeah, that's it. Let's, let's move on to some Aurora news. So right here, Aurora Cannabis hitting the target. So Aurora hits their target and sold more cannabis than any cannabis company ever has. Revenue soared to 54 million, up 363% since last year and 83% subsequent, um, sequentially. Aurora has the strongest market share of the Canadian cannabis companies that have reported to date, although Canopy is likely to surpass them on Thursday. So yes, Canopy will be reporting on Thursday and they will have a live earnings call on Friday morning, which I will be live streaming live. So if you guys want to catch that Canopy earnings call, I'll be live streaming it at 8.30 a.m. on Friday. That's 8.30 Eastern time on Friday. So I'm going to try my hardest to wake up super early on Friday. So Aurora's cash flow continues to be negative and valuations are optimistic. It was an excellent quarter from Aurora, but I remain on the sidelines here. And that's it for this article. I don't really want to get too into it because we got a lot of articles that we got to look at today. So Aurora Cannabis sets, and sets up a new facility. So Aurora Cannabis, construction of a 300,000 square foot expansion at the Edmonton International Airport is progressing well. The new facility named Aurora Polaris will allow an, for enhanced capabilities for the company's logistics and warehousing needs. Construction is anticipated to be completed late 2019. Honestly, um, you know how construction goes. It never goes up to schedule. This could probably be done by 2020. Who knows? But if it's done by 2019, then that's amazing. Shares are down 3% pre-market. Yes, but that was pre-market. It's looking good right now, though. And that's it for now. So now we're going to move on to this article right here. 20 things to know about Aurora Cannabis second quarter results. So let's just go jump in straight to the, to what we need to know. So 363% sales and growth. Having provided sales guidance in early January to of 50 million Canadian dollars and 55 and 55 million for Q2 Aurora cannabis delivered revenue near the upper end of the range with a Canadian 54.2 million in net sales up 363 from the year ago quarter. Although this was slightly ahead of Wall Street's estimates, it should be noted that Wall Street had been expecting 67.4 million before the company before the company's January issued sales update. 
So that was its sales net revenue. But also what I guess they didn't talk about was the gross revenue, which was 62 million up 109% from last quarter, up 430% year over year. Two, accounted for a fifth of all Canadian cannabis sales. So there's a little doubt at this point that the, that Aurora will take its seat at the head of the production table. So to peak, according to, according to available data from Health Canada, it accounted for 20% of all consumer sales for the Q2 2019 period. This would include the post October 17th period, which is when recreational weed went on sale in Canada. So number three, medical marijuana is still representing a majority of weed sales. Interestingly enough, recreational pot sales still took a backseat to medical marijuana sales in Aurora's latest quarter. Net adult use hit Canadian 21.6 million up from less than 0.6 million in the sequential first quarter with medical cannabis sales rising modestly to a 26 million from 24 million in the sequential first quarter, expecting recreational sales to leave medical sales in the dust beginning next quarter. So four, substantial growth in ancillary revenue. So don't forget that Aurora has has other sale channels beyond cannabis. It's ancillary revenue channels, which include greenhouse design and construction services, patient, patient counseling, analytical testing services, and horizontally integrated business revenue totaled to 6.6 .6 million in Q2 2019, up from 1.10 1.9 million in the year ago quarter. So that's that's some huge growth. So that's over three times growth from a year ago. So number five, benefiting from fair value adjustment in Q2 2019. International financial reporting standards accounting, which Canadian pot stocks abide by, has been more friend than foe in the early going for the cannabis growers during Q2. Aurora Cannabis realized a gross profit of about 28.4 million prior to fair value adjustment, but walked away with a net of 3.7 million Canadian benefits from fair value adjustment to its biological assets. That's when all was said and done. Thus, its gross profit lifted to 32.1 million. Number six, tumbling prices for average dried cannabis price per year. Number six, tumbling prices for average dried cannabis price per gram. Although it's early in the rollout of pot products, the per gram price of dried cannabis tumbled 21% year over year and 26% from the sequential first quarter. The country Company attributed this decline to the 10% excise tax on recreational weed sales as well as lower wholesale pricing. Number six, double digit drop in average per gram extract prices. Now this was shocking. Not only did dried flowers per gram price fall, but the price of extracts on per gram basis fell by 25% year over year and 18% from the sequential first quarter. Extracts are traditionally higher margin products, but excise taxes weighed down prices in the latest quarter. Number eight, large operating loss loss as expected. So no surprise here, Aurora Cannabis is losing a lot of money if one-time benefits and costs are removed from the equation. Spending liberally on its capacity expansion, international push, and branding led the company to a 80 0.2 million operating loss in second quarter. Generally, an administrative expenses, sales, and marketing costs and acquisition costs rose by 476%, 343%, and 224%, respectively, from the prior year and year period. Number nine, investments as an Achilles heel this quarter. So during the fiscal first quarter, Aurora Cannabis recognized a substantial profit thanks to its numerous investments. This quarter, the opposite happened, and the company investments significantly, significantly declined in value, resulting in a $194 million unrealized loss on its marketable securities. Given the way, given the way the pot stocks have rallied since the year began, this figure could be could again be positive in Aurora's fiscal third quarter. So, ten aggregate loss of a twenty-five cent per share. All told, Aurora Cannabis lost a lot of money in the second quarter. The company's net loss tallied $239.6 million. That's kind of weird because I think here it was $237.75 million. So I don't know which one's more accurate than the other, but it's somewhere in between there. Uh, with its comprehensive loss, which includes the marketable securities value adjustment noted above, pushing to four, $405 million on a per share basis. Aurora lost $0.25 cents per share, which was a five times wider than the $0.05 cents per share loss the Wall Street has been looking for. Number 11, should generate recurring positive EBITDA by Q4 2019. Possibly the most positive announcement from Aurora is that it should be generating positive EBITDA on a recurring basis by the fiscal fourth quarter, which is April 1st to June 30th. 
note that this doesn't mean overall will be profitable, but it bodes well for its future bottom line result. Number 12, launch numerous cannabis alternatives in Q2 2019. So we, I'm just going to skip that one. Um, you know what? No. Yeah. Number 13, a leveling off of inventory. Number 14, 120,000 kilos existing run rate. Number 13, three acquisitions since October 1st. I'm going to read this one. This should be no surprise, but the acquisitions, but the acquisition hungry Aurora cannabis continue to devour smaller companies during the fiscal for second quarter. It gobbled up a South America ICC labs for 290 million, purchased Mexico Farmacias Magistrales and announced the 175 million buyout of Whistler medical marijuana at the end of January. Don't expect Aurora inorganic growth tendencies to slow anytime soon. So if you guys want to read these full, this full article, you guys can check it out. I'm just going to skim past these, um, these points used uh, 178 million in net cash last quarter. So approximately 500 million in cash and marketable securities, a focus on international expansion and hemp. So what will Aurora do with all this cash? According to management commentary, it'll primarily be focusing on attracting medical patients, expanding into international markets and pushing into the hemp business. Hemp is rich in CBD and cannabinoid, best known for its perceived medical benefits with the farm bill becoming law in the US, thereby legalizing hemp and hemp-based CBD products, it wouldn't be surprising to see Aurora enter the US market. Number 19, 23 countries and counting. So speaking of international expansion, Aurora Cannabis now has operations in 23 countries and counting. Since domestic cannabis demand will probably be limited to around 1 million kilos, having overseas sales channels in the plant in place will be important to ensure that program weed prices don't plunge, leading to a decline in operating margins. And number 20, 998.1 million shares outstanding. Yes, this has been Aurora's biggest weakness, which was their share dilution and the amount of shares that they have outstanding. So let's read this one. And finally, as promised, Aurora loves to sell its own stock like it's going out of style. While the company's aggressive acquisition strategy has pushed it to head of the production table, it's completely sucked any chance for share prices for share price gains away from its shareholders. The company ended the quarter with 998.1 million shares outstanding, which is more than double the 469.4 million it had outstanding as of December 31st, 2017. This incessant dilution is arguably the single best reason to avoid this stock. Long story short, we're seeing plenty of top line progress, but there's still a lot of work to be done in other aspects of the company business. I knew that was that point was going to be brought up. So now it's up to 998.1 million shares outstanding. I'm just going to see if that is correct or if they even updated it here. No, because right here, I, still, I see 961.8 million. Maybe they haven't updated it. I didn't know that it was at 998 shares outstanding, which is ridiculous because they keep diluting their shares Hopefully, eventually, Aurora does some share buybacks. So um, only time will tell. So another interesting article I wanted to talk about, and I'm just going to skim past this, and you guys can check this article out if you guys want to read it. How marijuana giant Canopy Growth became Constellation Brand's brightest star. So I'm just going to skim past the points. Canopy's numbers are ramping up. That's one point. The second point, the Canadian opportunity is huge. Number three is Canopy's already getting ready to move south and enforce. So I'm just going to read that part right here. So lucrative, as lucrative as Canada will be for Canopy, the real jewel of the cannabis world is in the U.S. market. Canopy was, was quick to move after the recent legalization of hemp in the U.S. Farm Bill. The hemp production facility in upstate New York, in which it recently invested $150 million, is located conveniently close to Canopy's existing production facility just across the border in Ontario. And Constellation has complete confidence that Canopy can navigate the regulatory waters quickly to make the most of the new opportunity. Number four, Constellations will use its power to help Canopy. That's a good partner to have for Canopy, Constellation Brands. If you guys want to read this full article, check it out. Number five, Constellations itself is a way to bet on marijuana. Keep your eyes on Constellation. Constellation was a groundbreaker in the cannabis industry and Canopy Growth has made big moves to capitalize on its opportunities. Together, Constellations and Canopy have a lot to promise when it comes to tapping into the growing marijuana market as it expands worldwide so if you guys want to check out that whole article just look up how marijuana giant canopy growth became constellation brand's brightest star so once again guys let me know which picture you guys prefer better uh just comment left or right and let me know which which um, logo you prefer i personally like this one on the right um some people like the, the plain and simple one on the left let me know what you guys think uh 
and uh, that's it for now guys if you guys enjoyed this video give me a thumbs up if you're not subscribed yet don't forget to hit that notification bell and smash that subscribe button let me know what you guys think about aurora earnings about my logo just leave me some comments in the comment section and i hope you guys have a good day bye bye